So this is, it, you know, it makes life more exciting and it gives you a deeper appreciation for uh, what other people are doing. So uh, if you can, grandchild. So I um, served on the uh, Peace Studies faculty for about five years. Uh, I was a regular on the Feminist Studies faculty. I worked with the people on um, science, values, and technology, and did a cooperative study with a guy in the medical school on teaching on the university campus. It's a, uh, it's a peculiar history that I won't spend a whole lot of time on, but somewhere around age seven, I, my whole um, sort of psychological orientation changed and school became my real home. So we had our five biological children very close together because I wanted to get them here and get on with it, you know. And, uh, <laughs> but we still wanted more kids, so that's when we started adopting kids. And we adopted them in pretty much the same age range. So um, uh, nine of them are within about, what, eight years? The youngest one's a little bit behind, he's six, six years younger. I met Jim in high school. In, in fact, uh, <coughs> I told Audrey earlier that he and I have been best friends since age 14. But what you can do, and that I found enormously powerful, you can stretch the disciplines from within. And that's what we really have to do. So math teachers should teach more than that. They should include poetry and fiction and biography and history and all the possible connections that you can make with math. They so rarely do it that when a math teacher does it, the kids say, what? Math teachers can read? Hmm? Yeah, that I think we can do uh, to get teachers to move beyond the narrow borders of their own disciplines and show what it means to be an educated person. It doesn't mean that you have to be stuck in a narrow niche. You don't have to be because you can take a really fascinating topic and apply it over a wide range of uh, interests. So uh, I don't know if that's a, a word of wisdom, but it's a word of advice that I think is good advice.